Hello, this is Phil Carlson with a quick message for your personal, professional, and spiritual growth. Today, we're going to be talking about a section of a verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1, last part. Knowledge makes arrogant, but love edifies. Now, I used to work in the academic world, and I can tell you knowledge is a very important thing in that world. And what people do with that knowledge is also extremely important. But here's the thing about knowledge. Knowledge is power. But many people forget Lord Acton's famous saying that power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So if we continue to focus on just gaining knowledge, independent of love, we are actually opening ourselves up to radical corruption. This is why love and knowledge are always to be integrated in the Christian life. We want to know God, we want to know his word, but we also have to always keep it in the context of intimate human relationship and intimate relationship with God. In the academic world, there is a, a situation that goes on among most of the people in it that is infamous, and it's called imposter syndrome. And with imposter syndrome, it really is just that everyone is insecure. No matter how much they've studied, no matter how much they've done, they can have a PhD, they can have three PhDs. They could be published in some of the best publications in the world, the top journals, and yet still feel as though they are completely unqualified for being where they are, being a tenured professor, having a chair in a department, being the head of that department, even though they applied for it, even though they interviewed for it, even though they have aimed at it with their whole life, they still feel as though something is missing. And part of it is because they are continually comparing themselves to one another because there's always a threat that someone will know more. There's always a threat that someone will have greater power in their field. And this is where it gets back to this issue of being corrupted in the pursuit of knowledge. This also leads me to take a look at another passage in a different letter that Paul wrote to the Corinthian church. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, where Paul says, For we are not bold to class or compare ourselves with some of those who commend themselves, but when they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are without understanding. This is crazy. In that same world where these very knowledgeable academicians are comparing one another and comparing their accomplishments, the Word of God actually says they're revealing that they lack understanding. They're, the knowledge they think they have is not actually the knowledge that matters. The knowledge that matters most is this, that we are known by God. Do we know him? Does he know us? We cannot simply assume that we have a right relationship with God because of a feeling we have or some sort of thing that someone else told us. The issue is the Holy Spirit has to reveal to us whether or not we're in right relationship with God. And the primary means that God uses is the written word of God found in the Bible. And when we measure ourselves according to God's standard, then we are actually measuring ourselves correctly. And that talks about, for instance, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, which says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus as Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. Salvation is something that God has set the terms for. We don't get to set those terms. Yet how often do we live in presumption based on the knowledge we think we have? I can speak for myself, where I've been confronted many times by the fact that what I thought I knew isn't quite so. What I thought was a certain way is not quite that way. And that led me to have to actually realize that what I think I know is not so. And that led me to have to realize that I really needed to find the highest authority I could trust in. And it wasn't myself. It wasn't my reason. It wasn't my understanding. It wasn't my experience. It was the word of God. And so I cannot compare myself to anyone or anything else all I can do is come to the Word of God, and even then, my knowledge of the Word of God can become part of my own arrogance. So what do I need to do? Get in good and right relationship with other godly believers who will help keep me accountable to the Word and remind me of what matters most, love and knowledge of God. These must be present together, and if the love is not present, then it means I'm actually not operating in right relationship. And if the knowledge is not present, then also the love will be flawed. So what qualifies us then? 
Well, this is what I had to realize in the end, that whatever I know, whatever knowledge I have, it's still just a gift from God. It's actually something that Paul explained to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. What do you have that wasn't already given to you? Everything that we have is a gift. All knowledge, all power. And that means we are held accountable to God for how we use that gift. So let's actually see that knowledge not as a reason to be arrogant, but as a reason to have the fear of the Lord and to seek to live in love with God and with others. And not just love that takes, love that is about our pleasure. Let us learn how to love with a self-sacrificial love. Whatever knowledge I have is meant to be in the service of others and not be used to condemn or to hold over others as if I needed to prove myself. The only person that matters for how I stand before their eyes is God. And this is true for you as well. So God bless you and have a great day.